Hey guys, Insomni here with some more AFK Arena. Today we are back on our Light Bear account 28-48. As you can see, all of the other teams have actually progressed behind us. We This is still the front runner. This is the faction account. The Light Bears have been the front runner in the factions pretty much the entire time we've been running these accounts, which at this point is about nine months that we've been running the faction account. So 28-48, they are still the front runners and have the most heroes built. When we look here, we have a ton of heroes already at Ascended, as you can see. We have a lot already with plus 30 signature items, including Belinda and Gwen, we have Cecilia, we have Lucius, we have uh, Rowan already at a plus 30. Continuing to add more heroes, we are building Rigby. Not many people ever see Rigby or use Rigby, but I would definitely like to see him. And with the rework that we just seen to Rain, Rain will be another hero that I am adding exclusively to this account just because she did get the rework. So let's go ahead and we'll get into the summons here. We do have quite a few uh, stones to use, which as you can see, we have six elite hero stones. So fingers crossed, we get some of the new heroes, which it looks like we get a bunch of Graveborns. So we get Sophia, which is good, Torn or Thorin, which is good. Um, Kelthar, not the biggest fan, and then Namora and Arden as well. We do have quite a few stones here for the rare heroes, so we'll pick up those. Um, in the Celestials, this account, for some reason, cannot pull any copies of Taylene. As you can see, we still need two to get her to Mythic. Most of the other accounts have her to Mythic or have her to Mythic+. Plus. Um, this account for the Stargazer, for some reason, is completely slacking. So maybe today will be the day that we change that, um, that we get an opportunity to go ahead and build up some other heroes. So with Rigby, we do need a couple more copies of Rigby. We have no food at this point. We have a copy of Thane just hanging out right there. So I think I might put Rigby on a quick pause to build Rain if we can get some copies. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at our wish list really quick, which we do have Rigby in there. As you can see, Rain, we already have enough copies to get her up to Ascended, adding stars to everyone else, including building Hendrick at this point. Stargazing, we have 56 cards. This is the only account I've been able to run the Dusty Barons on so far, so we have 56 cards. We need two copies of Taylene to take her to Mythic to actually give her a signature item, make her usable. So the first one gives us a copy. Look at that. So we have four pulls left. We need one copy. Statistically speaking, that, that's pretty decent. If we could get a couple more copies, it would be absolutely amazing. We just need one though. Which again, got a couple artifact pieces, a couple fragments. So there we did get a piece of gear, but we have one pull left. Is it gonna continue? Can it be? No pull! No copy of Taylene again. So yet this account keeps her at Mythic Plus. So let's go ahead, we'll get into our companion points first. We did have one copy left. Remember last time we built Oscar. So I'm hoping here we can just pull a couple elite heroes, which would be ideal. If we get a copy of Taylene, would be absolutely crazy, especially after not getting anything from the Stargazer. Absolutely no love from the Stargazer today for the Light Bearer team again. Seems like they've been shut down more than any other team. And there's our first elite, which is a copy of Pharrell. So can't pull him on the Graveborn account, but definitely got a copy of him on the Light Bearer account. So here are a couple more rare cards. Come on, we need some elites. We need some Light Bearers. All right, so an elite right there, which is a copy of Laika. So no Light Bears again. Seems like this, this has been the trend this week with the uh, faction accounts. So really, really slacking. Double there, look at that. Finally, some Light Bears. It is copy of Rigby. Okay, I will take that. And a copy of Nara, which is always good. Perfect for running the faction towers. So let's go ahead and we'll get a couple heroes up here little bit more rare food and just one more so we're not even going to have enough if we don't get really lucky here we're not even going to have enough food to make any progression on this account either so 
we got one more. So next to be our elite pole, which hopefully is going to be a big one, just a single, but we got a copy of Tassie. So another copy for the Wilders. We do have one card on the table, so let's go ahead and if we can get another copy of Rigby, I wouldn't be disappointed, but copy of Rain, definitely very, very cool. All right, so let's see what we got here, if we have anything. So with Rain, we do have the two pieces here we could use as food. That would just take her to Legendary Plus, and that's essentially where she'd be parked. I don't think we have any other heroes because we do have a couple five-star heroes, as you can see, um, but we don't have any copies of them either. A couple single copies of our five-star heroes, but nobody that we can use any more copies to make more food. So essentially, we are still just going to be stuck as we are. So let's go ahead and look at the Oak Inn. And one thing that I was thinking a little bit earlier, so looking here at the workshop, um, we do have two cards here, 17,000, but I was actually wondering what does Reigns, uh, what was her items here? After three seconds of battle, the enemy with the lowest health is marked up until their death. Well marked, all damage increased by 30%. So pretty good. I, I might have to add her into the Oak Inn. That way when we build her, we have the copies, just need the food. Let's go ahead and see who we have in this wish list. That's a pretty tough wish list. Um, Lucius, I know a lot of people say it's not really worth building him, um, but I would definitely like to see him nine of nine. I'd like to really maximize him since he is the only tank we're using right now. Estrilda's in there as well. But Lucius overall is the one we're using. So hopefully we can get a more couple more copies. As you can see, Cecilia, no luck. Oscar, no luck. Estrilda Gwen, no luck when it comes to furniture so far. <coughs> so hopefully we can get a couple red pieces here. Which so far, just a couple legendary. This should be our mythic pull. Just one, which is copy for Rowan, another copy. So again, a lot of the light bears are going with absolutely no furniture because we are not seeing the luck that we need here to continue to build these heroes. Red Twinkle there, hopefully it's a double. It is a piece for Estrelda, so that is her first piece there. Three red cards on the table. Not sure we're going to have enough to... Max anybody out at this point, but let's go ahead. We'll just drop our light bears up into the top. So there's our light bear team. Let's go ahead and prioritize them. All right, so let's see what we got. As you can see, we're not much luck. Still have Rowan, which is doing pretty good. Got his three piece there. Got Lucius with his three piece. Got um, Cecilia with her three piece. So essentially, now we can really see where they're at. So Cecilia does have quite a few. Um, Gwen and Estrilda just a little bit, but I'm not sure if you can actually see if it's their pieces. And Oscar. So essentially we just need one more, because what I'm thinking is if we get, for instance, Rowan to six, we can use our cards to get him seven, eight, nine, if he in fact does really have his six piece bonus or five. So we need one more, one more, and we can get his nine piece bonus, which would be very, very cool to see. Um, as we continue, same with Lucius, if we can get a couple more pieces for him. Uh, when the effects of Bless Shield are active, the amount of energy the ally position below Lucius recovers when attacked is increased by 75%. That's kind of the thing is it's, it, you have to keep it pretty situational. So if there is displacement, um, you're going to have to deal with them, and he might not get the bonus. Also, with Cecilia, she has five pieces using the ultimate ability Judgment Day, which is her alt. Marks the enemy with the second highest damage dealt with a symbol of sin. So if you've seen her, especially with her three-piece, she puts symbols on everyone. She alts on everybody, which is very, very cool to see. So overall, that will do it for the Light Bears. Let's go ahead and take a look at the team themselves. So we do have a couple plus 30 signature items. I believe the next one that we're going to be looking at is going to be Oscar. Um, 
It just because ability possesses a stun effect which lasts five seconds. Absolutely super powerful with a stun effect. As you can see here, we don't have too many chests to use, but we did get him up a little bit higher, adding quite a bit of attack on him as well. So that will do it for the light bearers. 28-48, so hopefully we can make a little bit of progression today to continue pushing this account in the campaign because they are still further than any other team at this point. So let's go ahead and push some progression. To start the campaign push, we're gonna go ahead and go with our core team, which of course, Lucius, Falks, Rowan, Belinda, and as you can see, Rose, who is the superpower. So Rose actually does boost up Belinda's attack. Look at that, Falks clears the shield rate right off, allowing her to double alt, taking Belinda down. Absolutely flawless, and this was a super, super tough battle with Athelia last time. Almost didn't get the win here, but we did. Let's look at the damage. 26.58 million damage from Belinda. Definitely doing an insane amount of damage, even this far into the campaign. Let's go ahead and swap Rowan to the middle in this one because we don't have to deal with Athelia anymore. As you can see, Arden puts a shield over the hero right there. The shield reflects damage, meaning that she almost, Belinda almost killed herself on the shield. Um, just for the simple fact, the amount of damage that it does. Very, very tough to deal with, but 24.56 million damage from Belinda on that one. Another tough team here with the Eron Gorvo combo. This is why I want to build Eron and Gorvo so bad on my Wilder account, is because the combination of them together with the stuns and the the group dislocation, kind of how they move around the heroes. As you can see there, Gorvo jumping all the way back to the back line, stunning all the heroes back there. Very, very powerful, 35 million. Lucky Rose and Belinda were on the other side of Eron. Also, when you look at my team comp, I do use Falks, who is right behind Lucius. The reason behind this is when Falks actually drops a hero out of the confine ability, which you'll see here in a second, um, the hero actually goes right onto Lucius. Lucius on this one is pushed a little bit back, but as you can see there, runs forward, meaning that he is going to actually pick up the hero that comes out of the confine ability and be able to tank them up front, allowing not only Falks but Belinda to both do damage themselves. 25 million damage from Belinda there. Rowan doing a lot of healing. Remember, we do have his three set bonus, meaning that not only does he do a heal with the potions, the potions do possess a heal over time effect, which is very, very powerful in itself. Lucius heals himself, Lucius gets a potion, Lucius shields all the way back to full health, gets hit, uses another potion. This is why Rowan is so clutch on this team. Support, absolutely phenomenal. As you can see there, a lot of times Lucius would have went down if it wasn't for Rowan. Not only the stuns, the potions, the heals, allowing him to use the energy potion to get the shields off. 20 million, 12 million damage overall from Rose to get that boss stage done. Bringing us to 28-53. Maulers are not too difficult for this team to deal with just for the simple fact we have Falks and Falks can clean off Brutus' shield. Or, as you've seen right there, folks can just confine Brutus. Go ahead, take him out of the battle very, very early, um, allowing us to really focus our damage on Golas because Golas has so many hit points he's difficult to take down. Now we just have um, Brutus to worry about himself, which is very easy. Lucius can wait out the shield, getting the big win there. 29 million, 10 million from Falk, so overall doing quite a bit of damage on that one. Bring us to 28-54. Again, dealing with Golas is very, very difficult. Not only does Tassie banish our damage, um, banish Belinda in the bottom. There she banished her again, causing Rose to go to Rowan. Got a shield. Cleared off all of the enemy shields. Very, very tough to kill Almus. Once Almus goes deep root, he heals super fast. So even in this case where... We have Belinda who is banished. We don't have enough damage to actually get Almas down um, because of the deep roots. So there we got another shield. Rose goes back to Belinda. We got an alt, which finally got Almas down. 
just because we had the opportunity to keep Belinda up because she got banished, I believe, three times or four times. So look at that, 25 million from Rose, 28 from Belinda, bringing us to 28-55. Dwarf stages are usually not too difficult. What you have to be careful is when the dwarf pushes the primary hero, as you've seen in this case, Lucius, when he gets pushed to the back line, it exposes your back line um, and can possibly kill them if you're not careful. As you can see here, Belinda went down pretty early, causing Rose to actually go on Lucius, meaning that we are going to have a ton of shields coming up. There's the confine of Brutus, so we just have one hero to worry about, which is Arden. Soon as we can get him down, another shield. Boom, got the stage done. Even without Belinda, we got the stage done. 12 million, 12 million, 13 million. Belinda still owns damage, even though she was dead for most of the fight. 28-56. Dealing with Scrag is another one there. He has Sophia's buff, which folks just cleaned it off. There is the stun on Golas. Alt on Sophia. Double alts to make sure we got the job done. We just have to make sure in this lineup, if Shamira alts, most of the time that is game over. Is once she alts, which there was the interruption, absolutely timed perfectly. Interruption to Shamira's alt, or it could have been completely over. 32 million damage, putting out a ton of damage really, really quick with Belinda. Bringing us to 28-57. I'm hoping we can finish out this chapter and push into the next chapter. Like I had said, the Light Bears are farther in the campaign than any other faction account. They are still absolutely leading the pack. There we just nuked Veden and we nuked the Dwarf, and we nuked his gun with Belinda. Three for one putting 40 million damage up on the board. Wow, absolutely phenomenal. 28-58, this is a very, very tough team comp. When you have Mahira and Baden, Nimitsu, Brutus, Sophia, not only do you have the Falling Sun ability, Baden has adds, Nimitsu has adds. If you go on the enemy side, you're gonna be in the Spectral Disruption Sophia puts up. Sophia has also her stuns. Nemisu, as you can see, ju just the opposite Mauler team. Nemisu actually puts haste on Sophia, allowing her to do a lot more damage. So pretty much your heroes on this one are tied up trying to kill totems while trying to survive Baden's minions. So it looks like this one might be another defeat because here comes Falling Sun, fully powered in the top. Boom! Oh, took down Belinda too early. We're Close on this one. Definitely pretty close. So let's try swapping them up to the top. See if we can either confine Brutus, which there we go. I'm hoping we can get Sophia down early. Teacups go over there, stunning her. There's the perfect placed Rowan stun, but look at the ads. Look at the amount of Baden ads in the bottom. We are not going to be able to get through this giant group of ads. All right, so I think we're going to have to swap up the team a little. Let's go ahead and pop in. I'm thinking Estrilda, and we'll go with Gwen. We'll try this combo there. Hendrick would be ideal versus Estrilda, but as you can see, Estrilda pushes um, Brutus right to the back line, allowing the arrows to actually open up. We swapped out the gear for this team, but I don't have three full sets of Lightbird gear. I do have three sets of full Mythic gear for the three heroes we put in here. Let's try with Rowan tanking up front. Um, we'll swap in. I'm thinking let's try Cecilia. Let's try max damage. See if we can do some ad control. So she got absolutely destroyed. Gwen just got absolutely destroyed on that one. Even though Cecilia is still up in the top, Gwen cannot die that fast. Let's go ahead and try this again. So ah, the first arrow, of course, a stroke that just got absolutely run over right there which didn't help either. It seemed like it didn't, didn't even take a hit um, to move Baden back. Let's try Cecilia on the bottom. Maybe blocking Mahira a little bit, which there we did get an arrow off, but again, we're getting absolutely destroyed on this one. All right, let's try it out. Let's try on the top, we'll, we'll go with Falks. So we got the confine on Baden, which is good. We can really minimize the ads there. But again, Gwen got destroyed up top. 
Sophia's little scatterbolt is just splitting right off of Strilda, destroying us almost right off the bat. Let's go ahead and swap in. Let's try Oscar. We'll try Oscar with his team comp. I'm hoping with the signature item, the, the mitigation that he can get, even up there, just absolutely destroyed. Even completely geared out. So that is going to do it for the Light Bears. 28-58. Super, super excited. Two sages from being into Chapter 29, which will be absolutely phenomenal. Let me know in the comments what you think. Very, very bad luck with summons, unfortunately. But 28-58, still some solid progression for tonight. So let me know in the comments what you think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.